Welcome to Angelo's Tennis, the rise and fall of Emma Raducanu. So first thing I want to show you in this video, I'm going to start doing this. If you don't, if you're not aware of this already, you can go to the WTA website and the ATP website, and you can look up players' match history. You can see here uh, Raducanu uh, is currently ranked 212. I'm not sure if she's active or not, if this is this year or not. It doesn't matter because that's not what we're talking about in this video. So we're going to go to matches. And I'm going to go here to 2020, the start of her career. And I remember this because that was the COVID year. And I remember watching her. I remember watching this tournament right here, an ITF Europe 25,000. It was an indoor, hard and I remember watching this because I remember noticing her and I was like, you know, she's attractive, an attractive woman, great tennis player, looks good playing. And I watch, you know, I just like most people would, I watched the the matches and thought there was something there. And uh, you know, with COVID going on, there wasn't much tennis being played. I'm not sure if pro tennis was even going on. Uh, here was February 25th through March 1st. And we can see here she won, she made it to the finals. Before that, there was a, let's just put here, this is the beginning of the season. She played two ITFs, 25,000, both on hard court, both that same month, both in Great Britain. And we see she won a few matches, all 200 and above, pretty much. And then she won against this player here from Bulgaria, who was ranked 151 at the time. She won in three sets. I'm sorry, she lost in three sets against this Bulgarian player. So then we have COVID being over, 2021. And this is the year she won the U.S. Open. Now notice she starts the year not in January, but she starts ranked 366 in Great Britain, June 6th to June 13th. The uh, pre-tournament to the to Wimbledon, so she's on grass. She's a fast, hardcore player. She probably likes grass. She plays great on fast courts. She loses to Harriet Dart, an average player from Great Britain, currently or at the time ranked 143. One thing I want I want you to remember the remember the name Claire Tawson because we're gonna come back to Claire Tawson. She played her in that last tournament the year before and she won. So now she's ranked uh, 361, and she gets, and by the way, she gets a wild card here. This is a 250. This is a WTA 250. Consider this, we can consider this an official uh, top 100 pro tournament, and she gets a wild card. Doesn't have to play qualifiers. 361 gets another wild card to a uh, another grass court tournament that's going to suit her, that's going to favor her. She gets a wild card, doesn't have to play qualifiers, wins against an average player, Storm Hunter. <clears throat> I don't think she's ever really cracked the top 100. Another player within uh, the 100 to 200 range, she gets a win, and then she loses to a solid player, Pirankova, in two, two close sets, again on grass. And then she, now she's ranked 338, and she's at Wimbledon. She gets a wild card because it's her home. You know, you think, okay, it's her home country. She's getting wild cards here. Doesn't have to play qualifiers. Plays a qualifier the first round, and she wins. Who's not ranked in the top 100? Then she gets someone who's ranked in the top 100. Wins. Solid win here. Solid win against Kristea. Okay, but again, it's on grass. It's in her home country. You know, we know if you if you follow tennis, especially the way grass used to be, a lot of players can steal wins uh, during these tournaments because of the uh, because of how fast the surface is. I still think that's the case in today's Wimbledon, especially with the on the female side. And then she loses to another solid player, Tom Janovic from Australia, and now she's moving up the rankings. 184, another wild card. So she goes to America. So she goes, let's recap. She starts off 
in the grass court season. Gets a bunch of wild cards, a couple good wins, and literally goes from a nobody to ranked 184. And now she's in the America, again, going from a uh, English-speaking country in England to America, another English-speaking country, staying in that realm of comfortability. She goes to California, WTA, WTA 500, gets a wild card, loses first round to a solid Chinese player, Jang. Jang's going to play hard and fast. I don't even need to really remember who she is to know that. I know that's the case. She's from China. And then we go to Landisville, a 100,000 ITF tournament. And you see, she's still ranked 184. She gets, she has to go through qualifying. Now, here's the thing about Landisville, because I've been to this tournament about five or six times. It's a very weak tournament. It used to be, it started as a 25,000, then I think it went to 75 or 50, and now it's been 100 for several years. For the past few years, it's been 100,000. And when I say it's a weak tournament, it's a weak tournament. The qualifying is so weak. If you watch these, if you go to watch the qualifying tournament of a tournament like this, you, you start to think, they said, I started to think, if I had a daughter, I mean, this would be easiest thing in the world to get her in the top 100 or the top 200. And that's what it's like uh, at Landisville in the qualifying. So now Mona Barthel, you could say she's a solid player, but again, she's not going to really hit you off the court or anything like that. Not ranked in the top top 100 again. All her wins are between 100 and 300. And then she plays a Spanish player, which if you know anything about Spanish players, a lot of them, well, she still, she lost the match, but a lot of them are spinny. You know, they, they she would do well against players who aren't going to really force her to put pressure on her because of her game style. But I want to point out the fact that she finally gets a qualifier and it's probably the weakest tournament on the WTA. Or one of or one of them. Again, in America. In America, this is not even a city. This is uh you know, probably the smallest city you could possibly have a tennis tournament is um, nearby. You know, this is Amish country. And then she goes to Chicago and she gets another wild card. Rank is 174. And here we see she gets some solid some solid wins. Top 100, a couple top 100s, and then she gets to play Clara Tolson. As I mentioned, Clara Tolson. And she loses. Now, real opportunity for her to win there, but I, I really, the reason I wanted to mention that is that she gets to play, you know, on this rise, she gets to play a player that she's comfortable with. And I would guess that she played this Clara Bur Burrell. For some reason, that name. Uh, rings a bell that she was probably playing with or against during that COVID era. So a couple of players that she's going to be comfortable with, she might even be friends with here in Chicago. But still, all of these wild cards except for Landisville, and now she's going to get a qualifier. You know, I I ranked 150. I'm surprised she didn't get a wild card into this. And this is going to be her run. Her miracle run. She plays a player outside the top 200, outside the top 100, and then maybe a solid win. The top 100 player in qualifying. Egypt, though. I mean, come on, Egypt. I mean, Egypt isn't exactly known for their tennis. And then she plays a Stephanie Vogel, who is aging, up in age. Not a very fast player. Probably known, if she's known for anything, she's known for her you know, tennis experience, tennis IQ. There from Switzerland. Gets that win. Then she plays Zhang again. She already played Zhang, so she gets to play someone in her miracle run, again, who she's already played before. Very important. And then she plays this Spanish player. Go back and watch the highlights for Sarah Tormo. Watch her serve. It's the weakest serve on tour. And again, the Spanish by this idea of the Spanish player, probably a clay court player, isn't going to really hit through the court. Perfect for Raducano. Shelby Rogers can't really, you know, she's ranked 43. Can't trust any any American players. Can't trust Shelby Rogers. She's she's all over the place. 
solid win against Bencic. Everything I said about Vogel, I could say about Bencic, Switzerland. There's probably one of her few or only solid wins in this run. And then she plays Sakari. You could say that's a solid win. But Sakari is another one of those players. She can get very angry. She can get down on herself. And she's a you know a spinny player as well. Kind of plays a little bit like uh, like man's game, which again would you know she's not going to hit you off the court. And I will say this that I will say this about Raducanu. That's what you want in a female tennis player. You want to be able to hit through the court. Works very well in the women's game. That's why so many of them do it. They they just don't have the defensive capabilities that uh, men do. Uh, and we see here Layla Fernandez out of Canada. She wins that match, but we all know with Layla Fernandez, she's like four foot nothing. I, I think she's still in the. She probably still in the top 100. I think she's a great player. But if I was gonna play someone in the final, if I wanted to put money on a match, on a tough match, U.S. Open final, if I want to put money on it, I want to see a, Le a match against Le a Layla Fernandez versus some of these other players. You know, she's not getting a Serena Williams. And I know she did beat Serena later in her career as, as well. But, you know, a lot of these big tournaments that players are losing, they're playing, you know, they, they were playing like a Serena or a Venus where it's almost impossible for them to win physically. And then now she's in. All of a sudden, she's 22. And during her whole run, she's played two qualifiers. Landisville and the U.S. Open. And the year before, there was still it was still wild cards. Rank twenty two, she's still getting wild cards because she just you know she just won out of nowhere, so they gave her a wild card. Gets a first round bye, loses first round. Indian Wells. And that's when they changed the tournament. I think they bumped it up because of COVID. They rescheduled it, or they bumped it back. Now she's ranked twenty three. Hard, hard service in Romania. Looks like that might be indoor. Again, it's going to suit her. Not you know, Players aren't ranked in the top 100. Another indoor hard. Wild card. Loses to a Chinese player. Second round. First round bye. And that's her run. That's her miracle run right there. This is unheard of. This is unheard of lottery winning luck. And just real fast, look at the next year. This year I did the calculation. She's something like 16 wins and 18 losses, which is not bad. That's actually a good record for top 100 player. That'll keep you in the top 100. But here's the thing. She didn't really earn her spot. So that 16, to, 16 and 18 record is a little bit misleading. If we come, she starts a regular, her first regular season, probably her last I know she's had some injuries too. Starts off in Australia. Again, no no qualifiers here. Has completely skipped the qualifying rounds, the hardest rounds that people have to fight through. I'm not gonna go. I'm not. I'm just gonna go through this quickly. You can look at it if you want. If you want to see the details. A couple wild cards. No qualifying. Loses the first round U.S. Open. Ends the year ranked, looks like around 67. Following year, 2023, starts off 78 and finishes still 68. Not sure how that's possible. Didn't really play that much. And then 2024, now she's ranked 212.